What's up guys? This is my first video. This is Election Predictions 2020 channel. And let's just jump right in. Um, this is the post-coronavirus um, presidential election um, prediction. And right now, although Biden and Sanders are still battling it out right now, um, it appears as though uh, Vice President Joe Biden is going to get the Democratic nomination. Um, versus obviously the Republican incumbent Donald Trump. So already on this map, I filled in um, all of the red states that I think are pretty safe for the Republicans, and then all the blue states that um, I think are pretty safe for the Democrats. And as you can see, Biden already has uh, an advantage in the Electoral College going in, but of course haven't accounted for it. And, I mean, I don't think anyone would really argue um, with me with these predictions. I mean, historically, these have gone um, in their respective uh, categories. I mean, the only exception I can think of is maybe Indiana that went to Obama in 2008. That was, frankly, a fluke. And, I mean, of course, you have some Democrat governors in these red states, like, for example, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, um, and even the Democratic senator in Alabama and West Virginia, or like on the other side, you have a Democratic governor in Maryland. Um, but g generally on the national scale, the presidential elections follow this pattern. So let's just hop right in. Uh, I'm going to start with the likely states on both sides. The first state I want to go to is the state of Colorado. Um, I believe Colorado is going to be a likely um, Democratic state. Um, I know there's going to be a competitive Senate election here in 2020 um, that I also think um, will go to the Democrats. I don't think Cory Gardner will be able to hold off. Um, I think it appears John Hickenlooper, Hickenlooper um, who was a Democratic presidential candidate, will probably take this in the Senate. But ever since Colorado has legalized marijuana, they've been trending um, blue. And I don't see Donald Trump winning this state. Um, and then in New Mexico, I think it's um, similar to Colorado in that it's uh, trending blue, and I'm going to give it the likely Democratic um, label as well. Um, New Mexico is one of those states where it's actually the uh, Latino population has surpassed the white population. And although Donald Trump has done a few rallies in New Mexico, um, trying to expand his Latinos for Trump coalition. Um, I believe this is a little bit of false hope. Um, maybe he's trying to confuse Joe Biden and get Joe Biden to waste time campaigning in New Mexico. But I do not think that um, Donald Trump has a chance in New Mexico just because the demographic changes, unless he just captures a large portion of the Hispanic vote. Um, the next state I'm going to look at is New, uh, is uh, Nevada, which I think is very similar to New, New Mexico in the sense that it has a high Latino population. And in 2016, they actually had this state um, as a swing state, and Donald Trump on the 538 models was leading in that state. But um, typically, Nevada has been a very tough um, state to poll. And I highly doubt that Donald Trump um, has a chance in this state. I mean, the 2018 midterms, the incumbent Republican um, senator whose name I, is escaping me right now, I mean, just got walloped. So I don't expect um, – I expect Joe Biden to beat um, Donald Trump by like four or five points in Nevada. Next up is Virginia. This is another state that um, has traditionally – been a Republican state, like um, George Bush won the state two times. Um, I, I would say like before 2008, this is a state that Republicans thought they should have won. But I mean, e ever since Obama um, took office, this has been a state that has been trending blue. Um, and I know that Donald Trump outperformed what many pundits thought in 2016. I think he only lost the state by three points. In fact, at the beginning of election night last year, he was winning it, and pundits were like, wow, this is not a good sign for Hillary Clinton. But I think with D.C. expanding so much, the big government Democrats, I expect this to stay. 
Anyway, I expect Virginia to stay in the um, Democratic column. All right, next up, moving to the um, likely Republican states. The first state I want to put in here is the state of Ohio. Um, Ohio went to Donald Trump in 2016 by like 11 or 12 points, which really surprised the mainstream media because typically Ohio is this bellwether state. Um, where the winner of the Electoral College has to win Ohio. And that's what happened in 2016. But Ohio is one of those states that has been trending red. Um, In the 2018 midterms, uh, in a highly contested governor's race, Governor Mike DeWine um, pulled it out. And, I mean, he's uh, been really popular in his response to the coronavirus. So I, uh, I see Ohio staying. Um, in the Republican column, I mean, I expect Donald Trump to replicate his 2016 result and win by about 10 here. Um, in a similar type of demographic as um, Ohio, uh, Iowa, I expect to be likely Republican. Um, although the Senate race um, with Joni Erst, um, the Republican incumbent, I expect that to be a lot closer. That one could go either way. But I expect Donald Trump to firm up his base, just like in Ohio, and win this state by at least five points. I don't really expect this state to be that close. Although both of these states, Obama won twice um, in 2008 and um, 2012. Okay, and the next states I'm going to go to are the lean states. And I'm going to start with the Republicans um, this time. The first state I'm going to go to is the state of North Carolina. I think this state will lean Republican. Um, It did, uh, Obama did win it in 2008, but then Mitt Romney won it in 2012. Um, But I expect the Republicans to keep it. Uh, North Carolina is a really weird state. Um, It has similar demographics to Georgia, and that has a large African-American population. But I think that we can still consider it as a part of the solid South, even though it is increasingly becoming more of a swing state. Um, and North Carolina does have a Democratic governor, and its Senate um, election really is a, a toss-up. A toss I mean, Tom Tillis is trying hard to keep that seat, but I think that will definitely be difficult. Um Florida, I think, is actually going to be a state that leans Republican as well. Um, As you know, Donald Trump changed his residence from New York to Florida. And I think this is a a growing trend of a lot of retired folk and a lot of um, of the older population. And I think this helps the Republicans. Florida is a state that's trending red because – older, the boomer generation tends to vote more Republican than Democrat. And if you look at the voter registration data, I mean, it's very stark. Like out of all the swing states, typically the Democrats have a smaller advantage uh, or have a small advantage in the voter registration um, competition because younger voters and new voters tend to um, be Democrat, but in Florida, it's like 25% advantage to the Republicans in the voter turnout. And that is just because a lot of retired people move to Florida. Um, next up, I'm going to put Texas in the leans Republican column. A, a, a lot of people would say, no, like you need to put this in the likely Republican, like Texas is never going to go blue. But I really think people are going to be surprised at how close Texas is this go around. Um, The demographics of Texas are changing rapidly. The Hispanic population is growing. Although Hispanics in Texas tend to be more conservative than Hispanics in the country at large, there's a lot of people moving into Texas from California, from New York, from Illinois. A lot of these liberal states, um, there's people just exiting it and going into Texas because Texas Texas's economy is just booming, like in Austin, Dallas, San Antonio. These cities are drawing a lot of people from them and a lot of people who are probably going to vote Democrats. So I think this is going to be a one to two to three point victory um, by Donald Trump, but it's it's going to be a lot closer than people. 
And in the 2018 midterms, I know Ted Cruz narrowly um, won that by, I think, about one and a half points. Um, and although Ted Cruz uh, is not very popular, this is a significant uh, margin for him. But I think by 2020, um, some Democratic super PACs have pledged to register 2 million people in Texas. So I think 2020 is definitely going to be in play. And the DNC is just going to flood money into this state. So the Republicans really need to watch out. Because if the Republicans lose Texas, they don't have a chance um, just based through the Electoral College. Okay, next up, I'm going to go to the states that uh, I think are going to lean Democrat. And frankly, the only one I can really see here is the state of Michigan. Um, I know Donald Trump won this state in um, 2016, but I kind of think that was a fluke. Uh, Voter turnout among Democrats was very low. Um, This state voted for Bernie Sanders in the 2016 primary. A lot of people were not very – a lot of Democratic voters were not very enthused by Hillary Clinton. Um, The voter turnout among African Americans was – very low as well. Um, But I just see that the DNC is mobilized these big urban areas such as Detroit and Flint, Michigan. And I think that Joe Biden will win Michigan by at least two points. I mean, you remember Donald Trump only won the state by less than a percentage point. So I do think Joe Biden will be able to take the state. All right, next up, I'm going to go to the tilt states. So the, these are the states. I'm not going to leave any toss-up states at all. So this is going to be the election right here. All right, so the first state I'm going to go to tilt um, is going to be the Democratic state of Pennsylvania. Um, I think this state is going to tilt to the Democrats. You know, it's Joe Biden's home state. And although Donald Trump won this state in um, – 2016, I think that just because it's um, Joe Biden's home state, that he has a lot of connections, like to Scranton, Pennsylvania, I believe that he'll be able to edge this out at this point between probably under one and a half percentage points. I mean, th- this one could o- obviously change between now and election day, but that is where I have it right now. Um, next up is going to be the um, state of Maine at large. And uh, Maine is a little bit weird because it allocates its electoral votes by district. I think that the uh, state of Maine at large is going to tilt um, Democrat. Well, its first district is going to be safe Democrat, but its second district is going to tilt Republican. Maine is one of those states that has a large um, white working class population, um, which is a huge part of Donald Trump's base. So I think Donald Trump will actually do very well in Maine. Uh, he, I think he only lost by two percentage points to Hillary Clinton in 2016, a lot better than a lot of pundits um, thought he would. But I do see Donald Trump getting that second district like he did in 2016 by a very small margin. And moving on to Minnesota, I think Minnesota is going to tilt to the Democrats. Um, I think Minnesota is going to be a lot closer than a lot of pundits think. Um, Minnesota is actually one of those states that has been trending red for a long while. Um, It was the only state that Ronald Reagan did not win in his um, 1984 re-election. But I think that Donald Trump has a very good chance of winning this. Right now, I think Joe Biden is going to edge him out. But um, I think the Republicans are really going to try to um, get Minnesota um, this time, and they're going to pour money into it. I already know Donald Trump has done a few rallies there, and I'm really excited to see how Minnesota is going to turn out. I know Hillary Clinton edged Donald Trump by 2016, or in 2016 by like two percentage points, but Donald Trump didn't even campaign there, so I really think he has a great chance here. Um, I might tilt it to the Republicans in the future, so... 
All right, so we're getting down to the crunch time. Um, the last four states that will determine the election. Now, the next state that I think is going to tilt Republican is the state of Georgia. Um, I know in 2018 there was a very contested uh, governor's race between Brian Kemp and Stacey Abrams. Um, that you know, the Stacey Abrams says, "I I'm really the governor." Voter suppression, all this, um, which I mean, it's. It's, it's really hard to know, but I think a lot of that anger, um, because Stacey Abrams didn't win, I think there'll be a large Democratic turnout. Um, and so I think G- Georgia's one of those states that has always, like, it's part of the solid South, has pretty much always voted um, in modern political history. But I think this is a state that's actually going to be closer than Florida and North Carolina. It hasn't historically been a swing state. But I think the Republicans are just going to edge this out. And I think that the very contested, uh, there's two Senate races. One of them is the special election um, will hurt the Republicans up ballot. So Senator Kelly um, Lawfler is in a very contested uh, primary with Representative Doug Collins. who, If you remember, he was a very staunch House of Representatives person. Um, against the impeachment of Donald Trump from the state of Georgia. So he is very popular in the state of Georgia. But the NRSC um, is pouring a lot of money for Kelly Wolfler. But I know that's going to be a very messy primary, and it might hurt the Republicans in the general. The state I'm going to go to is the state of New Hampshire. I think this state is going to lean, uh, or tilt towards the Republicans, um, this is a state that Hillary Clinton won in 2016 by a very, very thin margin. It was the closest state out of all 50 states. And I really see Donald Trump taking this state. Um, it's it's right next to Vermont, Bernie Sanders' home state. And I think this year, 2020, there's more infected Bernie Sanders supporters than there were in 2016 just because they're so mad. I mean, the DNC rigged it against them again. And New Hampshire is very much composed of um, Donald Trump's base, the white working class. Next up is the state of Wisconsin, which I also think will tilt Republican. Um, In 2018, the Republicans just barely lost the uh, governorship. Um, Scott Wall um, very narrowly lost in a 2018 um, midterm election that was considered a wave, a blue wave, um, a great year for the Democrats. So in 2020, when Donald Trump is on the ballot, I see him very narrowly winning this state. I think that the fundamentals of uh, Wisconsin are a lot, um, look a lot more encouraging than Michigan and and, uh, Pennsylvania. I know that a, a lot of people in the media uh, lump all these three together, but they're very different states. Um, and I also think with the Democratic National Convention happening in Wisconsin, I think it's going to hurt the Democrats because there's going to be a lot of disaffected Bernie Sanders supporters going in and just causing, I mean, riots. I think. I mean, you, you saw those Project Veritas videos about there's going to be fires and riots, and I don't think that like the swing voters in Wisconsin are going to uh, react to that very well. So you see, um, I have the entire map filled out. Well, actually, okay. I think that the second district in um, Nebraska is is probably going to tilt towards the Republicans. I confess I don't know a lot about the second district in Nebraska, but typically has gone towards the Republicans. I think Donald Trump underperformed there, but I see him taking that um, just by the narrowest of margins um, in 2020. So as you can see, um, the last state on this map is the state of Arizona, which I don't think a lot of people suspected would be the deciding state in 2020. I mean, Arizona has been a state that has consistently voted for uh, Republicans at the presidential level. I mean, even at the Senate level.
But I really see Arizona as one of those states in 2020 that could go either way. Um, Arizona is a state that has been trending towards the Democrats um, in the last, like, 20 years. Um, I know John McCain won the state pretty heavily, but that's because he's from the state of Arizona. Um, Mitt Romney won the state by a smaller margin. And Donald Trump won the state, I think, by around three points, an even smaller margin. But in the 2018 midterms, um, Martha McSally just got walloped um, by Kristen Cinema, And I did not think Kristen Cinema was a very good candidate. I was surprised that she won. Uh, not shocked, because um, I knew Arizona was going to be close, especially in that wave year. But um, I expect Joe Biden to very narrowly take the state of Arizona and handing him the presidency in 2020. Um, Arizona has been trending blue for a while, and I think finally it's going to burst for the Republicans. I don't think Republicans are going to focus enough energy here as they are in the Rust Belt. I mean, the, the Rust Belt is very important too, but I think that Arizona will be neglected a little bit because they think uh, or the Republican National Convention and the Trump campaign think that Arizona is going to be solid Republican when it's not. And I think this is going to be a huge wake-up call to Republicans that Texas might be in play next. Um, so, I mean, th- this is how I'm going to call it now. I think Arizona is literally going to be the closest state in 2020. We'll see if this changes. Um, I think it very, very well might change. I mean, depending – on what like Joe Biden's um, final position is on immigration. He's kind of been flip-flopping a little bit, but we will see. So I think 2020 will be as close of an election as the 2000 um, Bush-Gore election. Remember how much um, chaos that that caused going to the Supreme Court. But th- thanks for watching this video. Um, I'll – I'll post new videos, I think, uh, once or twice a week. I'll figure it out. But please like, subscribe, and comment for more videos. Thanks.